So recently we've been looking at Nehemiah, where the Jewish people and Nehemiah are trying to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And we've been thinking about how we can learn from this book to rebuild our faiths or even just make them stronger. So far we've learnt to reset our hearts on God again and we need to resolve to start by stepping out and that we're not alone in doing this. We all have a part to play in our church and in the building up of each other's faiths. So today we're looking at Nehemiah 4 and up until this point things seem to have gone quite well. Nehemiah and the Jewish people have been released to go and rebuild Jerusalem they got a team together and they start, make a good start on rebuilding the wall. But as we'll see in Nehemiah 4, things got a lot harder. I wonder if you've ever planned to do something that seems like it'll be quite easy, but then as you've done it, more and more things have happened that actually make it really hard. So it might be preparing for an exam. So you look at what you need to do, you look at what you need to know, uh, you look at how you're going to get all that knowledge in your head and remember it. You um, come up with a schedule uh, and you say, right, I'm going to do at least half an hour of revision today. Um, and then I'm going to get full marks of the test at the end of it. But then, you know, you start and you are very determined and confident, right, I'm, I'm going to do this. But then your concentration dips and you start feeling quite hungry for some odd reason. And you, you're just thinking about all the things you'd rather be doing than revision. You, you maybe send a text to a friend. You think about what they're doing. You might even get laughed at because you're trying so hard. And it gets towards the end and you kind of don't want to keep doing it. You know, you really want to do well in this exam, you really should be revising, but you don't really want to because there's just too many hurdles and it feels like too much. Well, Nehemiah and the Jewish people found themselves in a situation which did get so much harder. They made a good start working together to build the wall, and then chapter 4 kicked off immediately. When Sambalat heard that they were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed, and he ridiculed the Jews in the presence of his associates, the army of Samaria. There was an entire army making fun of the Jewish people. And then another person joined in, Tobias the Ammonite, who essentially said, if a fox goes up that wall, it'll crumble. It's a rubbish wall. They were being quite viciously mocked by their enemies who were doing all that they could at that time to stop them rebuilding the wall. And this made Nehemiah feel very angry, so he prayed about it. And despite the opposition, they kept building the wall. And it says in verse 6 that the people continued to build with all of their heart. Then in verse 7 we see that even more people joined in to mock the Jews, and they were all very angry, so they plotted together about how they could come up against the Jewish people and stir up trouble. But again, despite this opposition, the Jewish people prayed to God, and they also po posted up guards day and night to defend them. Despite the threat, the Jews displayed a perfect balance of faith in God and readiness against the threats of the enemy. And then they recognise that actually, even despite their best efforts to rebuild this wall, they can't do it by themselves. In verse 10 it says this, The strength of those who bear the burdens is failing. There is too much rubble. By ourselves we will not be able to rebuild the wall. And then to make this worse, their enemies continue to mock them. Their enemies were trying to intimidate them into thinking a massive army at any minute would completely engulf them. So in this situation, we half expect them to say, you know what, it's not really worth it. We tried um, uh, and we, we even went through a, a good amount of suffering and things, but, you know, it's just got too hard now. So we'll, we're, we're going to stop. But instead of giving up, they didn't. They actually seemed to do the opposite. They seemed to act with more drive and determination to continue. And they completely 
decided that they were going to rebuild this wall in reliance on God. Nehemiah looked for weaknesses and he knew the dangers and then he took measures to guard against those dangers. And they took actions to prepare for battle. And then Nehemiah told them, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome. He reminded the people to continue to set their minds on God, on who their God is, to refocus their hearts on God, on his power, his awesomeness and his faithfulness. And then in verse 15, we see that God then brought their enemies plans to nothing. God frustrates the plan of the enemy. He shuts it down. It's over. It's finished. But then the work still doesn't stop and they don't let up their defences. If anything, they mount up their defences even more. So now half the workforce was devoted to military defence. Everyone was armed. They prepared for battle. They, the workers had a tool in one hand and a weapon in the other. So they were always watchful and ready for any sign of attack. And they had an alarm system at the sight of danger, a trumpet would sound and they'd all come together. But their hope was ultimately in their powerful, faithful and awesome God. In verse 20, Nehemiah says, our God will fight for us. We'll all come together and our God will fight for us. So what, what can we learn from this then? Well, the truth is, is that we will all face some form of opposition when we try to build our faiths. Whether that's from being mocked or the temptations we have, habitual sin, difficult situations we're in, the fact that our, our feelings and desires change so easily. There's lots of things that can affect us when we're trying to rebuild our faith. Lots of things that can make that so much harder. But we learn from Nehemiah that just because our enemies are scary or just because the rebuilding get, seems to get harder and circumstances change, that we can always rely on our God who never changes. We learn that when things are hard, we can and we should pray. We learn that when we see weaknesses we have, we can take measures against those things. We can arm ourselves with tools and weapons that God has given us. For example, we can pray to our God for strength. We should read our Bibles every day to fight back with God's promises. We should put on the armour of God. We should speak to our Christian friends and talk about the struggles we have and the encouragements that we're having as well. We can read a good Christian book and we can remove things that tempt us. Like if I was trying to revise, I shouldn't sit in a room with the television. You know, I should give my phone to my parents. Oh, well, I don't live with my parents now. We're to, to my wife, Hannah. And like the Jewish people, we should notice that ultimately we cannot rebuild our faiths by ourselves. But we can rely on our God. We should set our minds on him as we run this race of life. God has given us all we need to rebuild our faith and to be defended from our enemies. He has given us amazing tools for us to persevere in the rebuilding of our faith and strengthening of it. And this is what we see with Nehemiah and the Jewish people in chapter 4. And I just want to finish by encouraging you that this is a life's commitment. It won't be completed in a day. We see at the end of this chapter that the Jewish people continued to be watchful day and night. They continued to rebuild. So it likely won't be completed soon, but it will be completed. Remember that our God is awesome, powerful and faithful. And he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ. So let's just finish with this encouragement from Hebrews that seems to summarise all these points so well and remind us to look to Jesus. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race that is marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, 
who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart.